As you've heard, my cousin brother is supposed to be here this morning, but we pray for him and whatever he is going through and what's happening there. Our memory text for this morning is found in John chapter 17 and verse 17. The title of our study this morning is Satan's Final Deceptions. There's not one, it's plural, which means there's more. So we need to be on the lookout for the deceptions that he has in store for us. John 17 and verse 17 reads as follows. Sanctify them by your word. Your word is truth. Now there is nothing more to say about that scripture, passage of scripture. The word of God is truth. Um, it almost says that that last phrase of that verse is truth. Not the truth, it's the complete and only truth that there is, I would almost want to add. I think it's about two weeks ago that the Sabbath school superintendent read the scripture of that the word of God is for the use of correction and instruction and so on and this is what this week's bible study is doing for us it's warning us and it's warning us about two main issues and this week's bible study is a reminder to myself speakers many a time have said that we used to be the people of the book not this week this week confirms that we are the people of the book because we believe and we practice what we believe this week's study is you are practicing by just being here at this time in God's house what the word is saying and the deceptions that the, that the Bible study refers to this week is the state of the dead and the Sabbath in a nutshell but we're going to unpack it a little bit more and we are going to discuss it. Like I said, this is a discussion. It's not a presentation. It's a dialogue. You have, this, you have studied and there's lots of points, Brother Clive, that you would want to share with us this morning and we will give you the opportunity to do so. Okay? Morning, Elder. Good morning, Elder. This morning, I, I'm, I'm rushing from a funeral, actually. <laughs> And the first words I heard as I walked into the sanctuary, she's in a better place. <laughs> and I was like thinking, wow, we've studied this this week. Yeah. The key word being deception. And my, my introduction to this lesson would have been, Elder Dreyer, that there is a desire from Satan's part to have a relationship with mankind. Just as there is a greater desire from God's side to have a relationship with mankind. The difference being God is motivated in his relationship towards us by love. Satan has a different agenda. Mm -hmm. He drags us into the great controversy, this great conflict. And through deception, as we've studied this week, he aims to draw us away from God. Mm -hmm. Through his deception, he creates a very, very fine line between truth and error. He makes the error seem so good that from time to time it becomes difficult for God's people to distinguish truth from error. Mm. But when we look, Elder Dreyer, at, at the concepts that we've, 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 we've met in the lesson study, The state of the dead 
the the deception around this concept he sweetens it up because among all of God's creations you can be a believer or a non-believer you could have walked with God for a third or fourth or whatever size of your life you could have walked with him we never want to deal with the concept of parting from our loved ones and so Satan comes around and he sugarcoats that sad miserable atmosphere feeling that we go through in life he covers it in such a way to give us not the hope that God wants us to have but to give us a false sense of hope I was listening to um, to one of the the comments on the lesson last night where it says that it was never in God's plan for us to die. It was never His intention that man should go through the pain and the heartache of being separated from any individual that has become near and dear to you. As Adventists, we know that death has its roots in sin and due to sin it is destined for us to die <coughs> but how he covers it how he makes it look as if there is a life beyond the moment mm. of breathing our last breath mm. and through this he deceives us he deceives the world. He null and void certain biblical principles. And as a young boy, I was always fascinated when people spoke about the concept of our loved ones being in heaven. Mm -hmm. Our loved ones being... Yes, painfully because you did. You can't feel nothing. Mm -hmm. Our loved ones looking down upon us smiling at us when we go through trials and tribulations and when we when our hearts are breaking on this side of that grave i've always wondered and now i need to go to my mother tongue then is jesus must as prisman who come will i know where come for what i'm on my way to him when i close my eyes on earth why does he still want to be connected to this sinful world and come down for what to wake up who because if, if if we just look at it in normal common sense how is it possible that when i die i'm in heaven yet i believe that jesus will come to resurrect hmm. and some of these beliefs have, have have gone so far as to to demonstrate to people that if you do not believe in this concept that your loved one is still around you are not serving God properly so this week's lesson was really for me one of those lessons that just reaffirmed what God has given us as a movement that sets us apart from so many others but that we need to guard against those deceptions finding root within our movement Now this is where this is where I want to bring in something practical. I've grown up in Belleville 
um, walk those streets of um, 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 Durban Road, <laughs> Snyders, um, is it Bokomo, Fetters and Moners? And I understand that area has, has become like a little African plaza where you go and purchase whatever you need. And I once had a conversation with, with a youngster and he said to me, you know, Uncle E, if you want to get your girls good quality Nikes or Reeboks or whatever, you need to go to what I call Durban Road Plaza. And then I asked myself, I always ask myself this question, how do I know that that is genuine? <laughs> how do I know that I'm buying the right product? Because the right product must be different to what I'm purchasing. And then I, my mind went, I don't know what you call this guy, the guy that has the lens that he puts on his eye and he studies the diamond, Uncle Graham. That, that must be a type of profession. For, for, for the sake of this morning, let's call him a jeweler. When he picks up that magnifying lens, oh, let, let me go back. When I pick up that lens and I look at a stone that's supposed to represent a diamond, Shamel, I will not know what to look for. But that guy will pick that thing up and he will tell me, hey, Ernest, this thing is a fake. This thing has, no, this thing has all the qualities. This is a good one. I don't know how many carrots. The difference between him and me, the trained eye. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you have looked at this quarter's lesson study and, and, and found a little bit of emotion running through you. That God has given us the three angels' message and how valuable that message is in assisting us to understand not just the past, but to have comfort in the future. He has trained us through his word. Our memory text this week say, sanctify them with your word. With your, word. your word is truth. truth. And then I look at these court cases and I hear these guys say, and the truth shall set you free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we make it our purpose in studying God's word, it becomes easier for us to see the fake from the genuine. Mm -hmm. It becomes easier for us to understand why God gives us what he gives us. So this week's lesson is actually a very, very beautiful lesson, Sherwin. Mm -hmm. It speaks about our fundamental beliefs. Yes. It speaks about who we are as a people. But the part that worries me, Uncle Rowley, is that he will deceive even from the most elect. Mm -hmm. So that means we need to keep our guards up. We cannot rest for any moment to think that this thing may not come my way. We can be deceived even if we hold the highest office in this church for how many years? Comment. In a certain form. And you will be surprised Satan will bring up a lot of admirations mm. to prove that someone who is there actually is alive. Mm. And you know people believe based on what they see. Mm. So when they see those admirations, oh, the actor is still alive, I saw him. Mm. I saw him in my dream. I saw him at night. Mm. And when you are speaking about the state of the dead to such a person, the person's mind or conscience will be saved. They will never listen to you. They will tell you, have you seen something before? <laughs> <laughs> and it's very difficult. 
They say that deceptions are so strong that we have, as Christians, my very, very good. This person was able to deceive one third of the angels, not human beings. Mm. Even angels. Mm. Even angels. Mm. So it tells us that we must be on guard mm. and always pray that the Lord will strengthen us so that we can stand against the deceptions. Thank you for that comment. Is there any other comment before we continue? Malay. and then Elder May. Thank you for that comment. LMA, you had a you had a point? Yeah. Uh, the deceptions of Satan. 
Yes. Yes, I hear you. You see, you see this deception. Mm. And, and, and I'm sad to say, you know, I often repeat that I don't want to sound cliche this morning. This is your mind, your 20th, 11th, 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 Because this is such a touchy subject, sensitive, extremely, because we can identify with the pain of those who lose loved ones. That's why it's, 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 it's so important that we are sure of our identity as mm. Adventists. Mm. We are sure what we stand for. We need to understand why we've been placed here. And yes, this side of heaven, my brother, we will never be perfect. We strive for perfection, but as individuals, from time to time, we will let the baton fall. But then I am so grateful for the type of God that we serve. Mm. And I want to link this to something that has, has come along my way for the last six, seven months. Sister Muller, you said to us this morning, you read from the book of Mark, and false prophets will come along and priests and sharers of the word. You know, I get sick to my tummy when you go on 
the YouTube channels to watch some religious stuff. This morning I was happy enough to watch our guys from Kenya singing. Oh, that was nice. But sometimes it doesn't give you the option, Auntie Inky. It just pops up the next one. And you look and you listen to what people are being fed. And these are the prophets and the false priests and the false carriers of the gospel that comes into the world to deceive people. And among them are our friends and our families. And I've come to a point in my life where I've just decided it doesn't matter what you think, but I cannot go with you when I say to you, when, when you tell me something that is contrary to what I believe, we need to be bold mm -hmm. enough. We need to be sensitive in how we do it, mm -hmm. but we need to be bold enough for the world to know. We cannot allow people to go into this world believing what they believe without us putting our viewpoint on the table. And, and, and this is what I like. It is not our work to change their minds. It is not our work to get them to a state where they believe what we believe. We are merely supposed to plant, plant the seed. The seed. Now, the other day I was driving with somebody and then this thing came up. And I was shocked to the core. The individual tells me that his child went to Sunday school two, three weeks ago. I mean, when, when our kids go up there for Sabbath school, man, hey, they have a good time. We tell them stories to make them grow. As Christians, this guy says to me, he says, Ernest, you know, this child came back as we were seat, sitting at the lunch table. And the topic of the morning in, in Sunday school, ghost. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, wow, wow. It brings me to that question that I wanted to ask because I'm not that clever. What do we talk about when we talk about spiritualism? Because we know Satan has an idea about what happens to us when we die. And he conveys that thought to people. But then, in my view, and now you need to correct me if I'm wrong, Elder Dreyer. He acts upon it. And he brings that individual in one way or the other back into our minds so that we can understand and hear from that person. If, 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 if I'm wrong, please correct me. Elder Mayer is going to correct you. And then. isn't that the dangerous part then, of breaking this concept that when we die, there's a life moving on still for us? Elder May. Yes. Yes. Spiritualism. Spiritualism. Spiritualism is a very big thing. Yes. It is so vast. Alan White says that Satan, remember that Satan was thrown out of heaven. He still has his powers. He can still perform miracles. Do do things beyond our understanding. She says that when a lot of Satan is able to impersonate that person to how that person looks and how that person sounds. And mm. voice will hear today, it will be exact to the key, mm. totally everything. Mm. She said, you must not underestimate spiritualism. Mm. It is such a wide field. And, and we see it, like, like, like you said earlier, you know, YouTube is so full of this thing today. And it comes in all forms and guises. Mm. He says to me, he says to me, I heard my mother speak to me. 
Yes. It is a big thing. Yes, it is. It's a big thing. Mm -hmm. Football clubs, man, they go, as they have a, a coach, they go to spiritual this mm. guy at the background there. He's throwing the bones and he's doing his thing there. Man, he's a real thing. Yeah, to, to bring it home, in South African terms, we talk about the Sangoma. It speaks to the ancestors. And I'm going to tie Sunday and Monday in where it says the way of, the way that seems to the man in his eyes is right. Now there's the saying that your truth and my truth. No? You've, you've heard that that's the new, new age saying your truth and my truth. No, the Bible says that there's one truth. That, that, that's, that, there's only one truth. It's not your truth and my truth. As we grow up, we would say there's, that's your story and my story and that's the right. The, the word of God is the truth. Ecclesiastes 9.5 says that the dead know nothing. Let's do it. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, our favorite funeral text says that the Lord is going to come again. All right? Those that's dead will rise first. There's going to be a call and those are dead that's going to rise. All right? So, so, so in a nutshell, that sums up what the state of the dead is, right? If you're dead, you're dead. You know nothing. There's, not, there's nothing for you to do. There's nothing that you need to do or whatever anymore after you have closed your eyes in Jesus. And that is where the deception comes in when Monday's part talks about the immortality and the spiritualism. The, 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 the immortality and the spiritualism on these two texts, sort of cancels that out. And, and Elder May is correct when he says that we as Adventists live a salted life when it comes to that. Because once you tap into what's going out there, it's scary what people believe. It's really scary. I mean, being a Sangoma is a real thing. It's a real thing. It's a, it's a, it's a reality. It's a... It's a, it's a Status position within a community. You are a knowledgeable person. And that one person has influence over a community. A ha not in the house, a community. In, in what they say and what they do and the instruction that they give. Now, our responsibility as Adventists, I said in my introduction that we practice what we believe by being here on a Sabbath in God's house. What about the other six days? What do we do? Do we just say, yes, I agree with you to keep the peace? Or do we quote Ecclesiastes 9 and 5 and saying that the dead know nothing? Do we speak up with our friend or our colleague in the car, giving us a lift, being fearful that he's going to stop and tell us to get out, when you say, but that is you spoken, there's no such thing as ghosts. What are you talking about? And like we said earlier, lovingly, kind, sensitive, intelligent, tactfully, the word of God is there for instruction and correction. That is what we get every week. So that is arming us to go out there. I see your hand, I see your hand. That is arming us to go out there every day and to sort of spread the word of God. My sister.
Amen. And unsearchable things. On God's word. And on, on things that are so pertinent to salvation. You see, and, and we have this, and we don't always appreciate mm -hmm. that we have discussions on these serious topics. Yes. And they go according to what the preacher says, and that's, that's it. Enough. That's it, that's the gospel, yeah. Subtly coming in. Yeah.
I also think, Alderate, before we move on, mm. that if we become less critical of what others believe and become more sympathetic in understanding where they are caught up, we will handle sharing truth differently. Mm. My question has always been, I mean, really, man. When, when we sometimes think of deception, we are thinking that Satan in his own outfit will pitch. But he has agents. And he uses forces outside of him. As he deceived a third of the angels, he uses forces outside of him. And it has come to a point where even those that we deem as, 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 as individuals, we deem these as religious leaders. I sometimes ask myself, why would somebody follow somebody that is talking stuff that doesn't make sense? <laughs> why is it that, that he can whoop you in a church? And you still follow him. <laughs> Where he can say stuff to you and you still follow. It is because the lack of knowledge. Mm. Mm. And what I really appreciate, if nothing else that I've learned as a young boy in the Adventist church, I need no other one to talk on my behalf mm. to my God. Mm. Mm. That is a great barrier for many people because they've become accustomed to that is the leader. There is nothing wrong in his, her life. What mm. he or she says gospel. must be mm. holy. We need to assist people in understanding that your salvation is a case of an individual seeking God. But the fearful thing, and if you throw stones, throw small ones, <laughs> it's creeping into our church. I know what I'm talking about. It's creeping into our church. You look at just go and study social media of Adventist people. Go check. You go check. My mom asked me one day, "No wonder for you for my big Anna my malas a graf to to fry for what nega gaan ma? What must I go do then? They sleeping. I don't bother people when they sleep. Leave them. <laughs> but among us. Uh. Check statuses. Happy birthday, my friend. We miss you. It has been two years. Subtly, Satan is using us <clears throat> to portray a message that's not true to this church. Mm. Hence, I will, I will come back to it. My people will perish mm. because of a lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. Our purpose is to share the knowledge that we have. God's job is to convert. 
And okay. once we get that thing sorted, it is sorted. Sister Beverly, then I'm going to I don't know if I'm right asking this. Ask the question. <coughs> Not at all. Not at all. What I'm trying to say is that in my personal life, I'm guarding myself against certain things. No, there's not. Remember, you have a relationship with an individual. There are days when I sit in my house and I would think back upon the great impact my granny made on my life. And I'll shed a tear. Because I never had the opportunity to be an adult to repay what she has done in my life. Nothing wrong with that. It must not consume us. Mm. It must not take us off the path that God is leading for us. And we trust to see our loved ones at resurrection morning. But it's important the message that we carry to people. That is important to me. That we make sure that we do not preach a message contrary to what we believe. Are, are you with me? And, 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 and like I always say, Sister Beverly, it's a very sensitive topic and we need to be very careful how we deal with it because we all have had a great loss mm. and I can never equate my loss mm. to yours mm. because that's an individual loss yes. that you have. That's an individual path that you must, you must walk. It never heals. Yes. It never heals. We live with death, but do we live life differently with a different mindset to where our loved ones find themselves. That's important. Elder Graham? The value of the relationship. That is an apt conclusion to that section of the, of the Bible study. What we're going into next is something that, that surprised me in, in, in actually that this vision was allowed, but it was also revealed to me, also revealed to me why this was, that a prophet was revealed that there were people at the temple mm. not worshipping in the temple and worshipping the creator. They were at the temple worshipping the sun. And, and that sort of threw me. And, and, and ties into what we said earlier, but aren't these people supposed to know best or better? Mm. And it ties in with what the text was read earlier about even those that are learned amongst us will be deceived. deceived. What's my point? My point is that in Kings, 2 Kings 23 and verse 11, and in fact, when you read the chapter of 23, there's a restoration process that takes place. The king of the time said, no, these things are not right. They are not supposed to be in the temple. They are not supposed to be used the way that they are used. We need to fix that. And where does that come from? That comes from the king having a relationship with God. 
That comes from waiting on the instruction from God. What we need to do. How we need to live our lives. And I'm going to tie in back to what we just said. That how we live our lives is based on the word, which is our memory text. The word is truth. Mm. The word is truth. And the, and the word will sanctify us. Which means we need to base our action and our lives on what the word says. And not let cultural issues or habits becomes our little gods or worshippers. Because when we go on and when we tie that section into the next section, the call to faith, is that, remember, the people in Egypt, they turned away from what they believed. And God allowed them to perish in saying that you are not the generation that I'm going to go into the promised land because you turned away. And they again, for a second time, he reestablished the Sabbath. We said that the Sabbath will be a sign between you and me. It's a covenant between you and I. That you are keeping my laws. My, my question I want to put on the floor this morning. Does it really matter? <laughs> Does it really matter when we worship? Does it really matter who we worship? Does it really matter how we worship? The reason why I'm asking, opposing that question on the floor, that is how Satan goes about. Mm. He dilutes whatever is important to a question that, that makes it look and seem to us as if but as long as I worship. Remember when he, when, when, when he, when he spoke to, to Eve? He, he asked a simple question. Did he really? He played deaf. He played a little forgetfulness. Because I'm sure he was there. He heard exactly what God said to her. Mm. Did, did he really say? And so sometimes when we look at worship <laughs> show, the question that the world is asking and stating out there, is it really important as long as you worship? And then they have this nice one I, I have heard many, many times. All roads mm. lead to heaven. Well, then, 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 then surely... What I said at the start, that Jesus was joking. Because he himself claimed, I am the way. Mm. It's only through me mm. that you can enter mm. into my father's house. Yeah. So we need to be very careful about how we go about in the various things that we believe. And it starts off, Sister Miller, with stuff like, that we expose our children to. Stuff that we listen to and we don't correct them. Things that they bring home and we allow them to grow it. Until at the end it becomes very difficult to tell them and show them this is where we believe. This is what God expects of us. And I will always say it is not the easiest of roads to walk. But we must keep our feet firm on the basis of what God has given us. And so this term, through the lessons that we've been studying in the three angels' messages, God is simply calling us, and this is my viewpoint, is calling us back to our roots, back to believing what we need to believe and being the instruments that we need to be. Definitely. Let's close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that in your wisdom you have given us the opportunity to study your word. And Father, we may not always understand what you want from us. We may not always understand how to go about. This morning we pray, dear God, that you would keep us 
firm and solid in the truth. Lord, that we will continue to search your word, for within it we will find truth. And that truth, dear God, will set us free from so many things Amen. in life. It will set us free, dear God, from the hold that Satan has on us. Because we will be able to understand and know how it goes about. We pray to God that as we move into the next section of our worship this morning, that your spirit may come and dwell with us. Speak to our hearts, lift our spirits, and draw us closer to you. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> 